Coop, have you listened to the AZ song yet? I think you're still on mute, sir. Am I off? Am I off mute? Yeah, yeah. You're off mute. I hear you now. That's hard. Digging it? Oh, that's pretty tough. Yeah. He's pretty tough. AZ's one of the greats. He is. He's great. He's not good. He's great. You know what I mean? I think that'd be the thing with him. People think because he's not like in the GOAT conversation per se. Oh, no. He's great. Well, the thing you know, is, we should talk about we should talk about him because Door dies about to celebrate its anniversary anyway. What is I remember the thing it came with him though? He rhymes with the goat so much. I think people forget how high he is on that totem pole. It's very Benny Siegel-ish, if we want to be real. No, it's beyond Siegel because he's got a better catalog than Siegel. Mm. Uh, he's a better lyricist, actually, than Siegel. And you know, you don't hear me say that often. I was going to say, for you to say that, that's a big deal. 36 Chambers with a super chat says, Y'all know with how the Grammys are, and it's going to be Metro Boomin' or her loss because because uh, how they were everywhere. I don't like yeah. that, but be yeah. real. I don't know, man. I think that things have changed as it pertains to these awards and these award ceremonies. I saw that there was a, a red carpet for the BET Hip Hop Awards, which I think is going to be airing this weekend. They always pre-record that one for some reason, but... Where was our invite? I don't know. Get I don't even know who's nominee, nominated, honestly. Well, we ain't get invited. But back to AZ, though. Back to A. Back to AZ. Um, okay, so you got AZ over Be- Beanie Siegel. Yeah. Explain. Um, Doer dies better than the truth and the becoming. Um, better guest appearances, uh, better songs, better career. Mm, I'm gonna put this in more the notable chat, features. He's even done R and B features. Like remember the D'Angelo Lady remix, mm-hmm. uh, Devil's Pie remix. I think it was uh, the Monifa I Miss You remix. Yeah, he killed the I Miss you. He killed the Monifa I Miss You remix. Killed that. Check the gold cellar, the Rockefeller with lots of mozzarella. Still never not so cheddar trying to have a lock, have this lock forever. The king of Nazareth living lavish with. What do you think about this yeah, song? He was cold. Used to looking fresh plus looking fabulous. Yeah, that nigga cold. What do you think about this song? Oh, he's cold. That's what I'm saying. He sound like, hey. It sounds like, you know what I mean? I wanted to have the Black Thought conversation, too, because it's like I was doing a little Roots dig, and it's been more of a solo mission than he's getting credit for, Mike. I mean, do you want to start off with the Black Thought thing? And then we can go into, uh, you know, the KD3 and Magic thing? We're kind of on A. I kind of like where we are on A because I think it kind of ties into thought. It's like, right. you, you know, when you actually look at A's resume, because I, I actually at the behest of our listeners and followers and watchers, I actually went back and listened to Pieces of a Man again. And it's like, man, when you look at, like, Do or Die, Mm -hmm. uh, Pieces of a Man, um, what's the other one? Uh, Um, You're talking about uh, Asiatic? Asiatic, yep. Asiatic, um, the uh, Do or Die 2. Mm -hmm. You look at you look at the whole rhyming with the goat thing. You look at the tracks that he's done with other stuff. Like, remember Magic Hour with CL Smooth? Mm-hmm. The joints he's done with Ray, with Ghost. He's very Ray like Prodigy. Him and Ray. I was actually thinking. I was going to talk about Ray and Ghost today because it's like we have Ray and Ghost so high, but they've helped each other more than Black Thought has had help from any member of the Roots. Okay, l- let me get to these super chats and we're gonna get to that. Um, web visibility with the super chat says, "I love both KD three and Magic three, but I think KD three has the best. I'm sorry, has has the best is is the best of the six albums uh, because I think that the highs are just better than KD three. Are just better. Oh, K- I'm sorry, the highs are just better on KD three. Magic and Quincy Thun thirty reminisce." I think we should have that conversation again. Mad Max with the Super I, Chat I, says, AZ um, is one of my favorites. His problem was, in my opinion, that he talked about the 5% talk on his albums after Doe or Die. 
so mainstream wouldn't promote him. Um, you know what I'm I'm seeing with this KD three and Magic three conversation? This reminds me of when we were having the KD two and Magic conversation. Well, here's what I'll tell you after having time to like digest Magic three a little bit more. For the people that feel like KD three is a better album, I can understand why you might feel that way. I'll tell you that I think that the writing is better on Magic Three. Okay, I do. When he says stuff like "coming like the Twelve Sons of Jacob," and on the hook when he's saying "Wolf out of NYC," this is prophecy. Mm. Yeah, it's just different for me. You know what I'm saying? Michael and Quincy's yeah. tough though. Like, um, see, that's what I mean. Michael and Quincy is tough. But it's more about the execution and like the meshing of the two artists. That's what I mean. Is it's like, how about this? I think KD three is like Nas the artist. Magic three is like Nas the writer. You know what I'm saying? I think you're getting the writer on on Magic three. And it, and it's it's all about your taste at that point. Like, which do you like more? But I like what you said when Magic three came out. The reason that we hold Nas so high is because of the writing, chiefly. I mean, among other things, obviously, but that's the strongest the writing part of the his storytelling. Game. And him being able to tap into that on Magic 3, it does kind of, you know, make things a little different. And I also said, like, look at, look at degree of the difficulty, too. It's like, think about this. <clears throat> he already unloaded KD3, and then Magic 2, before he got to this mm -hmm. so that's what i mean you got to look at it from the degree of difficulty too like think about how great kd3 is think about the fact that he came back within like a nine eight nine month period and made something comparable to it that's crazy you're right that's and, crazy yeah. it's like so like that's what i mean it's close enough that I, i'm gonna give the edge like like i've been known to say i give the edge to the writer and the degree of difficulty is higher because he's like think about this it's like no like kd2 and magic and magic uh and magic 2 and kd3 like he's already kd1 like he just got done doing five projects and he still had something like this within him and as, as a writer that's what i'm saying oh thumbs up in the chat and i don't want to be all over the place tonight or whatnot but i do want to make a correction i did a i did a mic check yesterday coop and um I was talking about this story that came out where they're saying that Speaker Box Love Below is the number one rap selling rap album of all time. And they're not really being specific about this because I'm just going to keep it real. The real to real is the Eminem show is the highest selling rap album of all time. It is. It sold 27 million units worldwide. Now, domestically in America, yes, yeah, Speaker Box Love Below is 13 million next to the Eminem shows 12 million domestically but again we're talking about a double disc you really got six and a half million people that bought it as opposed to the Eminem show 12 million people bought it domestically but what I do want to correct is the fact that um I was giving numbers that were from the UK as if they were from the Philippines and so I didn't I do need to make that correction but at the end of the day, man, Eminem has so many certifications worldwide. One of the things that I discovered in this deep dive, Coop, is Eminem is like the only rapper that I can find that sold this many units that ended up selling way more units worldwide than he did in the States. So to kind of paint that picture for the people in the room, the Eminem show sold 12 million well, I guess wherever they got it docked at now, I'm sure the numbers are up. But anyway, 12 million in the States, 27 million worldwide, right? Whereas something like Get Rich or Die Trying, 9 million in the States, 12 million worldwide. You got a 3 million spread right there. But with M, his spreads look like 15. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, um, I think the Marshall Mathers LP is 11 million in the States. 25 worldwide and so i say that to say we always seem to attribute his record sales to white america but it's really not america it's the rest of the world honestly 
And whereas you have somebody like Nelly who would do 10 million in the States, it'd be like 13, 14 million worldwide. So it's not just white America that connects to him. It's really a worldwide thing, which I thought was interesting. That's something I never even knew. Well. But I wanted to correct that, you know. I'm glad that you're taking the time to correct yourself and also give Eminem some of his just too. Yeah. It's better when it comes from you. I don't like how they're spreading this. That, and I love Cass. It's an incredible accomplishment. The speaker box love below is $13 million. But to just say that it is the top-selling rap album of all time, that's like not counting the rest of the world. Like, in what business do we do that? Where it's like, if you're selling a product, we're not counting the products that were sold in the UK. We're not counting the products that were sold in Japan. That's not true. The highest selling rap album of all time is the Eminem show. It is what it is. Hate it or love it. Just and feels it, good to hear you say And that. it's by a long shot, too. One of the things that we talked about on... Um, on the um, um, mic check yesterday was, again, no disrespect, but yes, Speaker Box Love Below is a double disc. If the Eminem show was a double disc, that should be at 54 million units sold. Do people understand be doing, that? Be, <laughs> doing thriller, be doing thriller numbers out here. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> He's doing this off a of single joint. So, you know, we got to give that credit where credit's due, but what I didn't really understand was the fact that his worldwide numbers trump, no pun intended, his American numbers. So maybe we need to kind of lose that narrative that he's the middle America darling. He's kind of the global darling. For whatever reason. Mad Max with the Super Chat says, Mike, <laughs> that's what M was uh, meant to do. Only rapper more global than M is pop. Hmm. Well, I don't know what Pac's global numbers were, but I will say this. Pac's influence and impact in the States was heavy. I still think Pac is the most impactful, influential rapper of all time. Hip-hop artist, however you want to uh, name it, I don't think anybody even matches that, to be perfectly honest. But, but yeah, I didn't mean to go on a tangent. I just wanted to correct myself because people kept getting in the uh, comment section saying, yeah, Mike, you're talking about these numbers in the Philippines. This is, um, this is the UK. Oh, and the other thing that I discovered too, Coop, before we go back, I want to finish that part of the thought. Detroit, anybody who knows Detroit, Detroit is walking distance to Canada. I didn't realize how many units Eminem was selling in Canada. And it makes sense because they support him heavy. He's right there. Correct. Mm-hmm. His Canada numbers are big. And it makes sense because Canada probably treats him as if he's their own as well. Number one selling hip-hop artists all the time. But much respect to Cass and their accomplishment. I think that's great. But we got to get things correct. Or we got to be specific. At least say Speaker Box Love Below is the highest selling rap album in America or something. Domestically. But yes, we were talking about AZ. <laughs> or we were talking about Thought. Well, I mean, you want to slide in the Thought? Or what are your Let's expectations the for the AZ project? Since AZ has actually like dropped the joint and it's pretty hot. Well, this is the thing, man. I think that uh, what Nas is doing and what Nas and Hip Boy have done, obviously, is impacting their peers and or Nas's peers in, in the right of AZ. And yeah, it, it makes people hungry and it gets people to reinvigorate it and want to go out there and, and spaz on record. So I expect another dope album. Um, I know you were about to mention Ray and ghosts but was that more so pertain to the black thought conversation yeah okay well yeah i expect a lot from this az album because doa dot two was dope too it was it was really really dope mm -hmm. uh jermaine johnson with the super chat says 
Can we, as hip hop uh, purist community, finally be honest with ourselves and just admit that we don't care about the Grammys. Every year, we say, uh, I don't care about the Grammys, but every year we talk about it. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. So what were you going to say, Coop? No, no, no. I mean, I, I just, um, I think we might have AZ. Like, how about this? Where is AZ in relationship to somebody like a black thought or a ray or a ghost like is um, he really that far behind them when you look at it really i think it comes down to the records at that point in my opinion but, okay so what the is single, he missing record wise um i mean if we're talking ghosts you got the all that i got is used right you got the um you got the shay shay lagosas and stuff like that now granted az has sugar hill which is heavy but you know you got big. ray you got incarcerated Scarfaces. You got ice cream. You got what? Okay, let me ask you something. What uh, do you think of the records like um, rather unique and give me yours? Are they great? Okay. Yeah. More money, more murder, more homicide. The actual record, do or die. Your world don't stop. You don't like your world don't stop. I do, but I think the thing is, man, like A Z. Oddly enough. He is one of those MCs, and, and what he did and what he does actually fits more with this era of hip-hop than it did the era that he was in. What do you mean when you say that? Well, I mean where it's not about radio play. That part ain't important. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's that guy. Where, yeah, because I mean, cause he's in got his joints era, with Primo, like what, the come up? Remember mm -hmm. the come up with Primo? I love the come up. I actually that did a freestyle tough. on the come up. Yeah. yeah but I think in the era, tough. when you think about AZ's peers, though, in the era that he came up in, they had to have notable records. Like even Nori, right? When Nori came up, Nori had the the N-O-R-E record. You know what I'm saying? Now, now we're on the run eating. He had Super Thug. And I think that AZ has quality records. But he didn't make his records for the radio in an era remember where you hey, almost we, had to. Remember Hey AZ? Mm-hmm. They never released that. Yeah. Why do you think those things happen in his career? Like, I think I, I think he's actually a victim of industry politics more than anything else. I can see that. Because I can remember Do or Die, you know, being great and people thinking that it was great and he he was heavy. Like think about it. It's like even in '96, he's sitting in the dead president's video with Big and Jay. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got himself a seat at the table. Like you said, in '95, he had a bigger hit than Nas. Sugar Hill's a platinum single. Yeah, it's a big hit. Single. OG My album. Single. All right. OG Winston with the super chat says Az dropped the perfect track to lead his project off. I'm looking forward to the station head. You oh, know what? OJ, you're looking forward. Hold on. If you're looking forward to a station head, it can't be from here because Mike's been ducking me on station heads for months now. <laughs> That's going to change, man. You know what, man? Uh, I've been doing a deep dive, and I think I told you this at the studio. Speaking of Kanye and, and Jay-Z and that whole Rockefeller thing, we, 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 we all over the place today. But I realized Just Blaze may have given Cameron two of his top three beats. I think that I really mean it in The Rock, and I ain't even counting the old boy, are top three Just Blaze tracks. Now, I think the other three, I, the other one I would pick in that three would be You Don't Know. Right? What do you think about that? I think you've been ducking me on Station Head, Mike. <laughs> I have, but, man. But those are some of Just Blaze's best stuff. Do you think that and it's it's weird because obviously when it comes to Just Blaze, especially in that period, you would think Jay Z got the first pick of everything. For Cam to be able to get those tracks, quote unquote, under the nose of Jay at the time is very impressive. Now imagine the work that Just Blaze and Cam could have put together if there were no barriers. 
You know, but sometimes it's just the inspiration thing. People yeah. hear different things from different beats. Right. And so maybe Jay heard those beats and he liked those beats, but like what he had to it, he didn't feel comfortable to move forward in the process of like, you know, keeping the beat. I don't believe like Jay, that writer. I don't think Jay heard the rock. I, I just don't believe that. Now he might have heard I really mean it and didn't know what to do with it, but the rock, I, I don't think Jay heard that. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I mean the way Memphis set like, that I'm off just, on there. I'm just happy that you're talking about Just Blaze and not the other guy. Okay, well we'll keep it there. I mean Just Blaze has a lot to talk about. Esquire with the super chat says A Z is elite and easily top fifty. Hits proximity to uh Nas has worked both I'm sorry, his proximity to Nas has worked both for him and against him in all time combos. Because their fan bases overlap in many ways. How, how do you feel about that notion? I agree, because I think I'm one of those people early on that I didn't probably rate Do or Die and um, not Asiatic, but um, Pieces of a Man? But Pieces of I probably didn't give it its proper due because I was comparing him to Nas. Well, you know what? And as great as those, and as great as Do or Die and Pieces of a Man is, it's like, no, that's not Illmatic or it was written. Well, to your point on that, I but think. But Do or Die is better than I am. Oh, yeah. To your point, though, I think that the firm was the opportunity for him to really step out and stand out. And I think if He's people, the- if people viewed the firm in high regard, I think the AZ would be viewed differently as well. Do you agree with that? First of all, yes. I like Nine Lives, too. Nine Lives is a dope project from A2. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Nine Lives, too. He's got four banging projects, definitely. Um, Here's what I'll tell you, Mike. And And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. He's the best rapper on the Firm album. He is. He's the best MC on the Firm album. In 1997, that Firm project? Oh, the bar work from beginning to end, yeah. Mm. We harmonize with fluids from forces way beyond the skies. Now, why do you yeah. think that people didn't recognize that in that way? Nas. And Foxy, I think. I think that the star power from this? Nas and Foxy yeah, about to say, if you're walking, if you Well, if you're walking into that room in 1996-ish, 97, it's like, well, yeah, Foxy and Nas are just bigger than A, but they're not better than him. It feels like it feels like you know just looking back on it, right? Revisionist history. When we look at the whole rollout of the firm, Az felt like the third, you know what I mean, like the third leg, right? He felt like the you know three is company. He was. I'm not saying from a. I'm not saying from a performance standpoint, but it was almost like with the Fugees, where it was like Wyclef and and Lauren over here. And he's over there from a rollout standpoint, not saying from a performance standpoint. I don't I don't know how valid that is, Mike, because you do have to understand in 97, A has only released one project. Right. And that project is a gold selling album with a platinum single. So it's not like he's walking in there with nothing to hang his hat on. He of course. is. Of course. So I think I think I mean it was supposed to like it's a super group. It was a super group, not a super duo. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason why I was a, a super group is because no A was nice like that, but also had like the quote unquote industry credentials like that too. So I hear what you're saying, but not quite like a prize type of situation. This is more of a it's more of a Raekwon situation after Method Man and Old Dirty Bastard. Think so? Okay. Mad Max of the super chat says A Z yeah. not made for this era, Mike. He is a five percenter. He don't make vibey or lit music. Uh, this era, AZ would be most potent. The era that AZ would be most potent was in the blog era or the early 90s era. I could see the blog era. I'm with that. Um, do you think that maybe the reason why he got overlooked in some facets is because his style and voice is very similar to Nas? Because I think that Groups normally work and people stand out because of their contrasting sounds and voices. Like when Ray and Ghost are together, Ray has the deeper tone, Ghost has the high pitch. That's normally how it works, right? And I remember hearing clips for the first time. I couldn't really vocally tell the difference between the two and they were so evenly matched. 
neither one of them stood out. And I think with AZ and Nas, it's like both incredible MCs. But Nas has that output, so he kind of ends up being in the shadow. Does that make any sense? No, it's not the output. I mean, that his output's better. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you this. It's the voice. It's the flow. Yeah. Like, the way AZ puts words together is more... I'm not going to say technically sound than Nas. I'm just going to say it's more... It's a more fun and competitive style for somebody to take on. It's a more difficult style maybe to take on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, before we let any titty boppers try to stop us, you'd rather put your head through the propellers of a helicopter. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're putting words together like that, you know, that's that's the more fun and difficult rhyme task. But the translation of it is really the voice and the flow. And that's why when people be like, you know, Nas doesn't have a great flow, it's like, well, yeah, he does. He does. does. Yeah, he does. Flow's actually pretty sick. 